Bela Savitsky Abzig July 24, 1920 to March 31, 1998, nicknamed Battling Bella, was an American lawyer, U.S. representative, social activist and a leader of the women's movement. In 1971, Abzig joined other leading feminists such as Gloria Steinem, Shirley Chisholm, and Betty Friedan to found the National Women's Political Caucus. In 1970, Abzig's first campaign slogan was, This woman's place is in the House. The House of Representatives. She was later appointed to co-chair the National Commission on the Observance of International Women's Year created by President Gerald Ford's executive order, presided over the 1977 National Women's Conference, and led President Jimmy Carter's National Advisory Commission for Women. <laughs> Early life Bella Savitsky was born on July 24, 1920 in New York City. Both of her parents were Russian Jewish immigrants. Her mother, Esther Tanklevsky, was a homemaker, and her father, Emanuel Savitsky, ran the live and let live meat market. Even in her youth, she was competitive and would beat everyone, including the boys, in all sorts of competitions. When her father died, Abzig, then 13, was told that her Orthodox synagogue did not permit women to say the mourners Kaddish, since that right was reserved for sons of the deceased. However, because her father had no sons, she went to the synagogue every morning for a year to recite the prayer, defying the tradition of her congregation's practice of Orthodox Judaism. Abzig graduated from Walton High School in New York City, where she was class president, and went on to Hunter College of the City University of New York and simultaneously attended the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. She later earned a law degree from Columbia University in 1944. Topic legal and political career Abzig was admitted to the New York Bar in 1945, and started practicing in New York City at the firm of Pressman, Witt and Kammer, particularly in matters of labor law. She became an attorney in the 1940s, a time when very few women practiced law. Early on, she took on civil rights cases in the South. She appealed the case of Willie McGee, a black man convicted in 1945 of raping a white woman in Laurel, Mississippi and sentenced to death by an all-white jury who deliberated for only two and a half minutes. Abzig lost the appeal and the man was executed. Abzig was an outspoken advocate of liberal causes, including the failed Equal Rights Amendment, and opposition to the Vietnam War. Years before she was elected to the House of Representatives, she was an early participant in Women's Strike for Peace. Her political stands placed her on the master list of Nixon political opponents. Nicknamed Battling Bella, in 1970, she challenged the 14-year incumbent, Leonard Farbstein, in the Democratic primary for a congressional district on Manhattan's west side. She defeated Farbstein in a considerable upset, and then defeated talk show host Barry Farber in the general election. In 1972, her district was eliminated via redistricting and she chose to run against William Fitz Ryan, who also represented part of the West Side, in the Democratic primary. Ryan, although seriously ill, defeated Abzig. However, Ryan died before the general election and Abzig defeated his widow, Priscilla, in a party convention to choose the new Democratic nominee. In the general election Priscilla Ryan challenged Abzig on the Liberal Party line, but was unsuccessful. In the general election she was re-elected easily in 1974. For her last two terms, she represented part of the Bronx as well. She was one of the first members of Congress to support gay rights, introducing the first federal gay rights bill, known as the Equality Act of 1974, with fellow Democratic New York City Representative, Ed Koch, a future mayor of New York City. She chaired historic hearings on government secrecy. She was chair of Subcommittee on Government Information and Individual Rights. She was voted by her colleagues the third most influential member of the House as reported in U.S. News & World Report. Often recognized by these vibrant hats, though they were banned from the House, Bella reminded all who admired them, it's what's under the hat that counts. In February 1975, Abzig was part of a bipartisan delegation sent to Saigon by President Ford to assess the situation on the ground in South Vietnam near the end of the American War. Abzig was the only member of the delegation to oppose continued military and humanitarian aid to South Vietnam, yet her views quickly gained support in Congress. Abzig herself was the one who later told President Thu directly that the U.S. would not provide one more dollar of support. The controversial withdrawal of support contributed to the collapse of South Vietnam. 
Abzug's career in Congress ended with an unsuccessful bid for the Democratic nomination for the U.S. Senate in 1976, when she narrowly lost to the more moderate Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who had served in both the Nixon and Ford administrations as White House Urban Affairs Advisor, Counselor to the President, United States Ambassador to India, and United States Ambassador to the United Nations. Moynihan would go on to serve four terms in that office. Abzug was defeated in a four way primary race for the Senate in 1976 by less than 1%. However, she was not mentioned in the news and the coverage was only about the male candidates. President Carter appointed her chair of the National Commission on the Observance of International Women's Year and, later, co chair of the National Advisory Commission for Women. Abzug was a supporter of Zionism. As a young woman she was a member of the socialist Zionist youth movement of Hashomer Hatzair. In 1975 she challenged the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 3379 revoked in 1991 by Resolution 4686, which determined d that Zionism is a form of racism and racial discrimination. I've been described as a tough and noisy woman, a prizefighter, a man-hater, you name it. They call me Battling Bella. Later life and death Abzig never held elective office again after leaving the House, although she remained a high-profile figure and was again a candidate on multiple occasions. She was unsuccessful in her bid to be mayor of New York City in 1977, as well as in attempts to return to the U.S. House from the east side of Manhattan in 1978 against Bill Green, and from Westchester County, New York in 1986. She authored two successful books, Bella, Ms. Abzig Goes to Washington and The Gender Gap, the latter co-authored with friend and colleague, Mim Kelber. She continually devised innovative strategies to further her vision of equality and power for women in the United States and abroad. Abzig founded and ran several women's advocacy organizations, in 1979 Women USA and continued to lead feminist advocacy events, for example serving as Grand Marshal of the Women's Equality Day New York March on August 26, 1980. In the last decade of her life, in the early 1990s, with colleague Mim Kelber, she co-founded the Women's Environment and Development Organization WEDO, in their own words. A global women's advocacy organization working towards a just world that promotes and protects human rights, gender equality, and the integrity of the environment. As WEDO president, she became an influential leader at the United Nations and at UN World Conferences, working to empower women around the globe. Among its early successes was the World Women's Congress for a Healthy Planet held in Miami in 1991, where 1,500 women from 83 countries produced the Women's Action Agenda 21. Extending its perspective into the next century, this is a blueprint for incorporating women's concerns into development and environmental decision making at all levels, following through on her belief that women's direct participation is absolutely necessary for social change. Bella developed the Women's Caucus, which used new methods to get women involved in every phase of planning and development for UN conferences. The Women's Caucus analyzed documents, proposed gender-sensitive policies and language, and lobbied to advance the women's agenda for the 21st century at the UN Conference on Environment and Development, held in Rio de Janeiro in 1992. Bella and WEDO went on to play a leading role at the UN. They worked through the Women's Caucus to highlight issues of greatest concern to women in both ongoing policy making and at major UN conferences, including the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing in 1995. During UN conferences, governments would make commitments, promising to meet some of the goals furthered by the conference. WEDO developed strategies to monitor governments and make the results public. During her last years, Bella kept up her busy schedule of travel and work, even though she traveled in a wheelchair. Bella led WEDO until her death, giving her final public speech before the UN in March 1998. After battling breast cancer for a number of years, she developed heart disease and died on March 31, 1998 from complications following open-heart surgery. She was 77. Abzig was interred at Old Mount Carmel Cemetery, Glendale, Queens County, New York. She was inducted into the Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls and is the recipient of numerous prestigious national and international awards. 
A year before her death, Bella received the highest civilian recognition and honor at the UN, the Blue Beret Peacekeepers Award. She appeared in the WLIW video A Laugh, A Tear, A Mitzvah, as well as in Woody Allen's Manhattan as herself, a 1977 episode of Saturday Night Live, and the documentary New York, a documentary film. Family From 1944 until his death in 1986, Congresswoman Abzig was married to Martin Abzig, whom she met on a bus in Miami on the way to a Yehudi Menuhin concert. The couple had two children, Eve and Liz. <laughs> Legacy In the pilot episode of Lou Grant 1977, Joe Rossi gives the name of Bella Abzig when he first meets Lou. In 1979, the Super Sisters trading card set was produced and distributed. One of the cards featured Abzig's name and picture. Abzig appeared in Shirley MacLaine's autobiographical book Out on a Limb 1983. In the 1987 ABC television miniseries, Out on a Limb. Based on the book, Abzig was played by Ann Jackson. In 1994, Abzig was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Abzig was honored on March 6, 1997, at the United Nations as a leading female environmentalist. In 1998, Ms. Magazine named Abzig a role model. In 2004, her daughter Liz Abzig, an adjunct urban studies professor at Barnard College and a political consultant, founded the Bella Abzig Leadership Institute Bali to mentor and train high school and college women to become effective leaders in civic, political, corporate and community life. To commemorate the 30th anniversary of the first National Women's Conference, a groundbreaking event held in Houston in 1977 and over which Bella Abzig had presided, Bali hosted a National Women's Conference on the weekend of November 10–11, 2007, at Hunter College NYC. Over 600 people from around the world attended. Besides celebrating the 1977 conference, the 2007 agenda was to address significant women's issues for the 21st century. Abzig was a featured in a segment in the 2007 documentary NY77, The Coolest Year in Hell, which explores in depth what life was like during the year 1977 in Manhattan. An excerpt from a press conference of Bella Abzig is used when discussing the differences in political views between Abzig and fellow mayoral candidate Ed Koch. Geraldo Rivera gave detailed commentary on Bella's personality and political style. In 2010, Bali hosted their second annual Bella and Bella Fella Awards banquet. Notable winners of the awards include Gloria Steinem, Jennifer Robb, and Ken Sunshine. In 2017, she was named one of Time Magazine's 50 Women Who Made American Political History. In 2018, The Wing named a meeting room at their Washington, D.C. location after Bella Abzig, calling it the Office of Bella Asbug, Battle Leader. The video, Bella Abzig, in her own words, was produced by Progressive Source Communications for the Bella Abzig Leadership Institute. <laughs> <laughs> Selected bibliography Books <laughs> 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 Abzig, Bella, author, Ziegler, Mel, editor, 1972. Bella, Ms. Abzig goes to Washington. New York, Saturday Review Press. ISBN 9780841501514. Bella, Ms. Abzig, 1984. Gender Gap, Bella Abzig's Guide to Political Power for American Women. Boston, Houghton Mifflin. ISBN 9780395354300. Bella, Abzig, Bella, Mel, ed. 1995. Women, Looking Beyond 2000. New York, New York, United Nations. ISBN 9789211005996. Bella, Mel, ed. 1996. Women's Leadership and the Ethics of Development Gender in Development Monograph Series No. 4. 
New York, UNDP United Nations Development Program. Link. Topic. See also. Women's Equality Day. List of Jewish feminists. List of Jewish members of the United States Congress. Women in the United States House of Representatives. <laughs>